Ladies and gentlemen, today is January 11th, 2017, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 324, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. And by the way, yes, you did read that title right. You read that title right, because today we are going to be working on Casual Diva, right? Jumping on the bandwagon and drawing the Overwatch characters in their casual clothes. We want to, we want to get closer to the characters. We want to know what their lives are like, right? And we have chosen today... To do none other than Diva, we're gonna be talking about perspective. We're gonna be talking about, hey, look at this. I mean, I can't tell, I don't know if you can tell this by just the sketch, but in the background, oh wow, there's like this reflection coming from the window. Isn't that awesome? We're gonna be talking about masks and how to set up your piece and all that stuff, and basically just doing a little bit of a walkthrough. But today I wanna to focus specifically on this thing that we've never done before, and that is capturing a reflection in something else and how that acts, how that works, and the rules that you need to follow for that, okay? And it's going to be a big mouthful, but I'm going to try to condense it as much as possible. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, the lovely lane. So journey with me over to tinyurl slash kncalefanart. And make sure you click on the secret link called See All, and then you will be dazzled by the amazing pieces that you guys have been submitting. And for those of you who have not come out of your shells yet, please go over and like the page, submit your art, and you could be scrolling on by next week. That could be you right there, right there. That awesome Emma fan art could be yours right there. I, I can't really, you guys are making me miss that comic so much. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I miss it so much, but we need to get to the actual thing. And I need to tell you guys about something. I need to tell you guys about something right now. Okay, today is a very, very interesting day because it's another bit of a gloomy day. It's gloomy, okay? You look outside, it's like freaking gray and I'm feeling a little bit strange and there's a lot that I need to, like, it's hard enough that I went in here and I had to figure out all these rules. Actually, it's very simple, but like I, I made a lot of mistakes and I wanna show you guys that on the time lapse. In fact, that's a good segue into the time lapse. Let's go ahead and get into that. Let's talk about this and let's talk about, well, I made a lot of mistakes and, I, and it took a lot of time to get this piece to where it was just now. However, just getting these thumbnails, because we're so comfortable and just used to doing a lot of sketches like this, as well as I feel like I really had a strong vision of what I wanted this piece to be, uh, the thumbnailing stage didn't take too long. It didn't take that long at all. And I was really happy with how it, it came out early on. But uh, this is a good reminder to you guys that all of my pieces start out like this. They start out like this. They're very, very simple. I'm not going in there and I'm not starting with like Diva's eye, right? I'm not like starting, like zooming in and drawing Diva's eye like this first, right? And then kind of like going around and be like, oh, I guess we should like add in a background and like figure out a composition. You know, it's none of that. We're starting like this. And this allows us to kind of figure out a lot of things early on. For instance, where is our vanishing point? Where is our perspective line going to be? And for this, we're using a very simple, uh, we're using a one point perspective with a cheated second, right? And I'll get into that in just a second. But what does that mean? What the heck does that mean? One point perspective. Well, for one point perspective, it's very simple. All you have to know is the horizon line, and then you have to know where your vanishing point is. And then check this out, check this out. Now you can create something, you can create a reflection. Do you notice how the top of Diva's head meets up with the top of Diva's head here, right? Same thing with the shoulder, well the shoulders needed a little bit of work, but I fixed that later. The knees, right? See how the knees also follow that line? This is the basic principle that you guys wanna keep in mind when you are doing a reflective type of, adding a reflective element to your piece, okay? And then eventually you can take it to this point. But there's a lot of more all right, there's one more rule that I want to tell you guys about, and that has to do with when you start coloring, right? To make it look more uh, believable like this. And we'll be doing a lot more of that in just a moment, okay? But first, let me talk to you guys about this principle, okay? This is a very important principle to keep in mind. And that is, how do you know where your vanishing point should be? How do you know where your horizon line should be? Well, I'm going to teach you guys a really cool Thing. A really cool thing, and that is that your horizon line is actually where your eyes are, or in case, or in this case, it's the camera. The camera is positioned in a way that if it were here, right, if we were to have the camera, the camera lens is basically on the same line as Diva's ankle. So you can imagine us, we're like sitting on the floor taking a picture here, right? So the camera exists, the camera lens exists on the same line as the horizon line. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to teach you right now, right, because I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to check this out right here. So this will demonstrate two things for us, two things for us. 
Uh, one is that the perspective continues, right? You guys just learned this, right? <laughs> the perspective continues into the reflection. Isn't that awesome? So you can have your reflections. You know how to set up your reflections now to look realistic, and so they're following proper rules, okay? So we know that reflections continue the perspective, but where is our horizon line here? Well, I can guess that now that we know that the horizon line is on the same level as our character's eyes or the photographer's eyes, we can guess that if a person was standing in this doorway, their eyes would be right around here. So I'm willing to bet that the horizon line is right there. And then check this out. Look, I'm gonna use the line tool. I'm gonna draw a line up like that, boom. Line up like that, boom. Line down like that, boom. And a line down like that, boom. Look at that. See how our reflections all follow right to our vanishing point, which is on the horizon line where our photographer's eyes are. Okay, I'm glad I got that out, finally. I was trying so hard. You guys have no idea how many takes this took for me to get that out right. <laughs> but that is the principle in a nutshell. So we can take that, take that knowledge, and now we can say, okay, our horizon line is here. Our horizon line is here, right here. And then our vanishing point is here. And then look at that, we can measure all of our things out. However, do you notice that the vanishing point being on the left means that our camera has to move to the left, right? Our camera has to move to the left in order for this vanishing point to be over here, okay? And what that does is it causes Diva, rather than her looking straight at us, right? Rather than her mouth being straight on at us, her face is, and her whole body is now turned a little bit, right? So now we're getting a little bit more of a three-fourths uh, perspective. And that allows us to see the reflection. See? See what I'm talking about? That allows us to see the reflection behind her because if we were looking at her straight on, it wouldn't exactly be the same. Wouldn't exactly be the same um, if we wanted to kind of have the same. Actually, I think there's still a way that you could do it, but this looks a lot more natural to have the character following the same perspective line and kind of being in that three-fourths perspective. Okay, so now that I've sufficiently blown your minds, I've sufficiently loaded your minds up with too much to think about, let's go ahead and get back to our time lapse. Now let's talk about the things that I enjoyed about this piece and the things that I did not like. And for the most part, I think I really enjoyed most of this piece. I enjoyed the most of it, but there were some things that I was struggling with. Uh, one is that I made Diva's head. Okay, so refining the face, right? I've talked to you guys about this so many times, and that is, like, I'm a really big fan of capturing emotions and expressions in the face. And uh, sometimes when I go in and I refine things, uh, I tend to lose a little bit of what the original character is. And that's why I teach you guys about Control J. That is the magical key that you can hit to duplicate your layers up. And you can see right here, look, check out my layers. See how every now and then it like duplicates itself? See, layer six, copy six, layer six, copy five. That's because I'm getting ready to make changes to the face. I'm getting ready to try a new kind of treatment for the face. And I wanna be able to compare back to, think of it as a save state for your drawing. You wanna be able to compare back to an original piece, right? Or an original sketch where maybe you captured the expression a little bit better. Maybe you captured the character a little bit better. Don't, heaven forbid that you, you change your character's face and don't have anything to compare back to because you might lose something, you might change something, and then you don't even know that you lost it, right? I think that our true greatness, the true greatness of an artist comes out when you're not trying. That's why you can capture such amazing expressions. You can catch, capture such amazing flow when you're sketching in your sketchbook or just doing uh, little sketches on Photoshop, right? So I always keep those early, early uh, pieces of line art for me to refer back to. And you can see here, the, the face is changing quite a bit. And then eventually I end up not liking it and I just redo the entire thing. So that's probably the biggest thing that I struggled with on this piece uh, was getting the face to look right, getting the face to look the way that I wanted it to. A lot of you might look at this and be like, oh, I think that face looks fine, right? But it wasn't the face that I wanted. It wasn't the exact thing that I was looking for, okay? Um, but I was really happy with how simple, how easy the picture came out once I kind of set up all of my guidelines and my rules, right? And I kind of had an idea for what I wanted to go into it, okay? So speaking of making things easier on yourself, rather than try to figure out how this, how it looks when a person holds a controller like this, I literally just grabbed my own controller and I took a picture of myself and look at that. I'm now using that reference image to draw these hands. And that made it so much easier. So make sure you guys, I tell you guys this all the time. You guys are struggling with hands. Take a picture of your own hands. Take a picture of your own hands. You can even slap them in there and literally trace them if you want to. 
It doesn't matter because the point is that you want to have a good looking piece and nothing is better reference than referencing from real life. All right, cool. So the next thing that I ended up doing, another thing that I have been doing recently is I've been favoring going into sort of, especially the backgrounds because I've been wanting my backgrounds to look a little bit more clean. And so you'll see right here, I've actually lowered the opacity on my earlier sketch. And now I'm going over and creating new lines, new lines for the background. Now, why didn't I do this for the character you ask? Why did I not do it for the character? Well, the reason is because, uh, again, I, I, I still feel like I'm still in that mode where I like to refine the original sketch for the character because I'm, I'm too afraid of like losing the original feeling, right? I'm too afraid of losing that original, the original uh, look, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to Diva C. Diva Kaz C. <laughs> and let's go ahead and continue with this. Okay, so you guys can see me here. I'm setting up the reflection, setting up the reflection in such a way you can still see my vanishing points and my measuring lines are still in there so I know how to set this up. But then look at this. I'm laying out the rest of the room. I'm laying out the rest of the room because um, depending on how much of the reflection is going to be showing in the, in the window, uh, we might be able to see some outlines of like some posters and stuff like that, but we'll get to how that stuff, that's a whole nother monster that we're going to get into in just a second. And that has to do with what parts of the reflection come through. And I think I've found out a really simple way to explain it. In fact, it's actually a very simple way because it, it comes down to just changing one thing in Photoshop, like changing your, your layer style in Photoshop, and it will basically become a reflection on its own. Okay. So of course we are uh, another reference. Here, let me show you another reference that I pulled into this, and that is the Soul, the Soul Tower. I don't know what tower this is, but it's that one right there, and that is sort of like a landmark showing that Diva is in fact from Korea, and she is playing in her apartment building, and we can see the Soul Tower in the background, and that makes us very happy. And I'm a big fan of like just different Easter eggs and stuff, and and. <sighs> I was really contemplating whether I should put the Doritos in or not because I just feel like at this point it's such a meme. It's like not really, <laughs> not really worth it. But at the, I mean, at the end, I was like, you know what? Screw it. We got to put it in. <laughs> we got to put the Doritos in there. Um, but uh, I really like a lot of, I, I like having a lot of Easter eggs and I like telling story. And that was the main thing that I really wanted to get through with this is that I wanted the viewer to look at one part of the picture and then kind of move to the next part. And then with each part of the picture, they're like gleaning a new uh, part of information or a new piece of the story. And then eventually, and actually what I wanted people to do is maybe look at this piece for the first time, maybe not exactly recognize that it was Diva right off the bat, right? Like maybe they might say, oh, it looks kind of like Diva, but then, you know, eventually you'll see like the bunnies on her, on her leggings there and then the Lucio t-shirt and be like, oh yeah. And then the cheek things and then the, the Astro headset, you know, because a lot of people usually just put the, the Diva earphones like right on her, right? And then it's like a dead giveaway. But I wanted this one to be a little bit more subtle, tiny bit more subtle. Um, I don't know, maybe, you, <laughs> maybe it's not as subtle as it should have been or it could have been, but I feel like I found that happy medium and I was really happy with how this turned out. And I'm digging it, I'm digging it a lot. Okay guys, so uh, let me talk to you guys a little bit about masks and a new way that I'm doing masks that's really helping out a lot, a lot. So in the previous episodes, I've taught you guys to create uh, basically a character mask and then everything is basically like a clipping mask on top of it. However, I'm not really necessarily doing it that way anymore. I'm actually liking to separate each of my masks out by material. Okay, so you can see here, I've got, pay attention to the layers. Let me go ahead and zoom out so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Down here, you can see silver. And then we go to like, say, hey, here's like the sheets. Here is the ottoman. Here are the chips. You know, and then each of these things is on its own layer. And where this is gonna come in handy is for eventually when we want to go in there, we wanna begin lighting. We wanna begin lighting our character. And each of our materials and colors are on their own layer so we can do stuff like this. So take a look. Let's say, okay, I want to color just the, just the white parts, right? Let's go ahead and color just the white parts. So we're going to lock this. We're, or actually, no, no, we can do this. Create a new layer above the white layer. This is going to be coloring her leggings, right? Let's just name it like white light. And then we can go in there and we can color the leggings. 
Now I imagine there's gonna be sort of like a blue lighting that's coming from the TV, right? It's gonna be mostly blue lighting. So we can go in there and we can color the leggings like this. And then check this out, watch this. So the coolest thing about this that I like is that when you do it on its own layer like this, see how it's like a clipping mask? We can turn it on and off. This allows us to basically go in there and we can erase back to our original shadow color, right? So I'm basically drawing in and erasing in specific areas. So say like right here, there's gonna be a cast shadow from the chips, right? Super easy to do that now, right? Whereas before, it wasn't exactly quite that easy to do, right? We can just throw in those cast shadows, makes everything super simple. Let's go ahead and do another one on the shirt just to further the example shirt light go ahead and clip that one back now let's go ahead and color the shirt again we're working with like this bright blue light so let's go ahead and throw those colors in there and see how right before your very eyes we are beginning to light our character right and it's super simple and you can go crazy with this you can go crazy with it because if you want to go back to the shadow color all you got to do is just pull out your eraser pull out your eraser and then just kind of throw in those cast shadows isn't that awesome? Isn't that easy? Look at how easy that is to light your character, guys. Everybody should be doing this. Look, cast shadow from the hands and controller, no problem. I'm telling you, no problem. All right, get in there, just erase it out, and you got your nice little cast shadow. Boom, okay? So see how easy that is to light your character like that? And then you can just turn on the light, turn on and off your lights. So awesome. I really, I highly recommend you guys do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up the time lapse talk to you guys about the last rule of reflections that you guys need to know. The one rule you need to know, right? And then everything will fall into place. Everything will be fine after that. And then we're going to take a couple questions and we're going to end today's show. End today's show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I'm really excited to have this one finished because uh, I'm definitely planning on putting some really awesome Easter eggs, probably some at, like hiding some of my favorite things in this picture. You know, you could say that this is inspired by a lot of things that I like in my life, but um, uh, that, that has yet to be like fully put into the piece, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense right now because right now it's just kind of like blank screens. It's going to be on the computer and on the TV, right? That, that's what I'm getting at, right? That's, that's where the Easter eggs are going to be. And I might add in a couple other things here and there. But uh, let's talk about the reflection. Let's talk about the reflection. Okay, so for this... Let us examine, I'm gonna teach you guys a really cool way how to do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the, this is also like one of the most complicated PSDs that I've ever done. <laughs> so it might take a second for me to find it. Okay, there we go, there's the reflection. Okay, so you can see here, the way that I have created this reflection is the, the layer actually looks like this, right? And what I've done to make it into a reflection is I've gone to my layer style and I've just selected light. Now, do you notice what this does? What this does is that the colors that are actually lightening what is behind it, right? In this case, the background, see how the background is there? And we have these dark buildings, we have this dark, this works really well when there is darkness in your background. It's not gonna work as well if it was like a bright sunny day. You're not gonna see the reflections in the window at this time because there's not enough light to reflect off the window that's gonna overpower what's behind it. I think that's the best way that I could say it. So, um, but do you see how the reflections of these lanterns are also up here? See how the reflections of the lanterns? And also even these ones up here. The lights from the ceiling. The lights from the ceiling are up here too. See that light there, light there, light there. And do you notice something else? Do you see how these lights are converging on a certain point? Where are they converging? <gasps> Back to our original vanishing point, which is over here. And look at that. The vanishing point comes to our rescue once again. Once again, the vanishing point proves to be amazing. Okay? So um, that's a really, really handy way for how you're gonna lay out your reflections. Is remember, um, remember your vanishing point, remember your horizon line and you will go far in life, okay? So that is the second, <laughs> that's the easy way to do reflections, uh, perspective and setting your colors to lighten. Now there's a lot more things that I could do with this, with this reflection that's gonna make it look a lot more believable, but that is going to be reserved for our next show, right? That's gonna be reserved for our next show. So it's time to cast some question catapults.
And we got tons of good ones. Tons of good ones today. All right, guys, today is a very special, today is a very special one because we actually got a bunch of good questions. So I'm gonna answer three of these. There's three of these that were posted on the MZ. And um, this should be, <laughs> I just realized this is the wrong link. Don't pay attention to this. If you wanna submit your questions, then go here, mz.com slash kale. go there. Okay, but for now, I'm using, I'm using this screen because it's actually zoomed in on the actual question. So the first one is coming in from JRF. And he or she is asking, recently been, they're asking what does the concept artist do exactly, right? I've been recently considering becoming a concept artist, currently about to graduate from high school, about to go to college. Uh, of course, I'm aware the concept artist has the primary task of bringing forth ideas, but what does the average day look like? I'm curious as to, get, as to what you get paid to do. How does the whole concept artist process work? Is there a difference if you decide to freelance? Okay, so, uh, and they're asking for like a daily, a day in the life of a concept artist. Okay, so I'll be happy to answer this question, JRF. So what a concept artist does is they work with a team to come up with a bunch of crazy ideas, right? And there's a bunch of different types of concept art, but in my eyes, the, the essence of a concept artist is someone who creates something that was never there before, right? Or rather, I shouldn't say it like that. Like your goal is not to make something completely unique. Your goal is to find something that people can attach themselves to, and we call these archetypes, things that exist in the world, a hero. Uh, a certain person that looks a certain way or something that people are familiar with. They, they get an idea of, oh, hey, I've seen something like that before. And a good example is, hey, like a lot of the characters in League of Legends, right? Ash is a, uh, the archer, Frost Archer. We've seen that before. Ari is a nine-tailed fox lady. We've seen that. That's like a lore. It's based upon something that already exists. But then what we do is we start to incorporate unique things. We start to incorporate things that have never been done with that type of character, that type of archetype and we make it our own. And that is the true essence of a concept artist, is taking something, balancing something that already exists and bringing something into it, right, to make it unique, okay? So that's my answer to you, JRF. And uh, a day in the life is, well, for me, it's very simple because I just get up from my bed, I walk in here, I take like 10 steps into my studio and uh, I just get to work with a bunch of awesome clients. So, I mean, it's, it's a very fun lifestyle. And I like it a lot, so I would highly recommend. That's why I'm so excited about teaching you guys this stuff, because I want you guys to do this. I want you to, well, I mean, if you like working from home, if you want to work in the studio, then go work in the studio too. But I want you guys to be able to do this stuff. That's why I'm teaching you everything I know. Everything I know, even from the second that I learn it, right? I've never done this freaking, <laughs> never done freaking reflections before. Let's go to the next one, okay? Next one is coming in from Commander Simmons, which is an awesome name. And he or she is asking, I am a high school senior, question of where I'm going, what I'm gonna do for college has appeared, right? And this is a very, you are the only person to ever worry about this, let me just throw that out there right now. Figured out I wanna be an animator, but I'm kinda of stuck on choosing a college, right? Don't have grades and, uh, I, wait, I don't have great grades, but I doubt any good schools are gonna accept me. Parents, very little help when it comes to paying for it, and applications are due, and okay, yeah, I get where this is going. You wanna know where to go, you wanna know if you miss the boat, are you screwed? Are you, are you out of luck? And I'm here to tell you, no, you're not. You're not. In fact, if you want to be an artist, it doesn't like, I, I'm basically telling you that art school, art school, a lot of people say it doesn't matter. I personally think, I don't like to say it doesn't matter so much, but I will say that for artists specifically, uh, we are trailblazers. We can literally make our own path, whereas other other uh, occupations, such as being like a surgeon or a doctor, those require require very specific training, very specific degrees and pieces of paper and certifications and all that stuff in order for you to be able to work on a human brain, right? And it's probably a good thing that that is the case, right? You can't do it by passion alone. However, with art, you can do it by passion alone. And you can learn from online tutorials. You can learn from people like me and all the other artists out there, hundreds and thousands of artists that are teaching you everything that they know for free on YouTube. And I highly recommend that you really take advantage of that. Don't feel like you're totally out of the loop or you're screwed if you can't go to one school and learn from one person, one teacher that's gonna show you the way because that's not the way that art is. Art isn't about one person teaching you how to do it. It's, it's about you figuring out the way that you wanna do it, you bringing your own unique style to the world and being freaking awesome, okay? so. Pursue the school thing if that's what you truly wanna do. However, even if you do get into that, I would highly recommend that you don't focus on thinking that's the only thing that you have to do. That's not the key. That's not the key to you getting a career. That's not the key to you getting a job. 
The key to you getting a job is letting people know that you exist. It's about doing fan art. It's about doing stuff, not necessarily just fan art, but it's about creating something that's gonna give value to somebody, right? And this goes back to concept art. Why do people like fan art? Because it's something that they are already familiar with. It's something that they get, but then you throw your own unique style on it. Like, hey, perfect example. Here's the Overwatch character, but now they're in a casual state. Here's them in their casual clothes. And that is something that has never been done before, but it's something that people can attach themselves to and they immediately like it. So uh, that's a really good way for you to, kind of, hey, answer both those questions, putting them together, isn't that awesome? That's a good way to get exposure. Create value for somebody and they will be more receptive to it if it's something that they can relate to, something that they know about, hence fan art. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this last question. Oh man, and this one is coming in from K Marque Marquez. K Marquez. He or she is asking, hello everyone. I'm a traditional artist who just recently started digital art. Found this channel very helpful. Thank you very much. I'm finding it very difficult getting used to the drawing tablet. Okay, I know exactly how this feels. My work doesn't even come close to my style achieved with traditional art. Okay, and the reason why this is, the reason why this is, K Marquez, is because you need to develop a new type of Muscle memory, you need to develop the muscle memory of, basically you are, imagine you're painting something and you are now effectively blindfolded, right? You have no more of this instant feedback, right? You now have to be able to take the stylus and put it here and then look ahead at the screen to get feedback for what you're doing. And that is something that is just gonna take time. It's just like learning, uh, getting into a new video game, right? Like getting the muscle memory of being able to aim with joysticks and learning about the sensitivity and all the buttons and what they do, right? And that's the same thing. You're not gonna be good at it at first. And if you really truly do enjoy that traditional style of being able to see exactly where your strokes go, then I would highly recommend that you look into a Cintiq, which is basically one of these, but it sits up on your desk like this and it, kinda, and it has a screen and you can draw directly on the screen and paint directly on the screen. It's probably gonna be a much more comfortable transition for you. However, the price point on those is much higher. I think they're like a few thousand dollars, whereas one of these is like a few hundred dollars. So if the investment is worth it, definitely go for it. But I personally like this because uh, this is a personal preference, but when I was working with a Cintiq back at Riot Games, I would have it set up like this. It's usually set up like this, right? Because I mean, you don't want to be working on like this all day uh, because heaven forbid you do this, it's going to totally kill your neck. But even like this, I kind of still always had my neck at this slightly downward angle and it totally would jack me up only would jack me up after a few weeks. So what ended up working out really well is I went back to this because I really enjoyed being able to sit straight up, look straight ahead, and then allow my hand to be on the tablet right here. And it just really helped out a lot with my posture and, and all that stuff. And this is stuff that you have to keep in mind when you go full time because you're now doing this for eight hours a day. Your neck is now like this for eight hours a day if you don't get that proper posture. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. So, with all that out of the way, thank you for those amazing questions, by the way. With all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Hope you really enjoyed this diva piece. Uh, this is a crazy, crazy detailed PSD. So if you guys wanna go through all of these for yourselves and just click up here, go to the Patreon. You can support the show and download not only this PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past, forever and ever. And I really appreciate it, of course, you guys. Thank you so much for all the support that you've given the show, both just telling your friends about it and for those of you who support monetarily. Again, it really, truly makes my day, makes my world. Love you guys so much. Uh, but yeah, definitely go check this out. I'm really excited about this PSD. Really excited about this piece. Very, very excited about this piece. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, stay awesome.